The Lord be with you. This is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's wonderful to be here worshiping and praising God here in this place on this, the last, well, the next to the last Sunday in Lent. Next Sunday is Palm, Palm slash Passion Sunday, and we go through Holy Week. So a uh, reminder that um, on, on Palm Sunday, uh, worship at the regular time, Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m., Good Friday, there are two opportunities, one at Holy Cross at noon, which is a community thing. A number of uh, Lutheran churches in the area are getting together and doing it at Holy Cross. And then 7 o'clock, we'll do a Good Friday here. And then on Easter Sunday, we have a whole raft of things going on, which you can read about in your weekly newsletter. The deadline to order Easter plants is today, so please be sure to do that. Uh, next Sunday after worship, the women of the ELCA are assembling baskets for the shuttings. Uh, they would really appreciate any help they, that uh, you can give them. Uh, Scout Troop 695 is selling flowers again uh, as a fundraiser. For order forms are on the communications board with pictures of the flowers. Last day to order is, uh, and pay is Tuesday, April 12th. Flower pickup will be Saturday, May the 21st in the parking lot of the church from 2 to 4. Give your orders to Larry or Christine Snowden. Larry's the guy in the back there. Christine, I don't know where she Oh, there she is, right back there. Okay, there we go. Um, as I mentioned, on Easter Sunday, the day begins with an Easter breakfast at 8.30. And then, of course, there'll be the worship following. And then there's going to be an Easter fair that we're going to have a few coin games. We're going to have a petting farm um, and cupcakes and all that stuff. Any money we get for that is going to Heifer International. Uh, so uh, please, um, please stick around for that. But please come at 8.30 and do the whole thing. Um, Singing Assembly is coming up. It's going to be in Zion Lutheran Church in Ann Arbor. It's a one-day affair, Saturday, May the 14th. We do need uh, two people to do it. They prefer one male or one female or one somebody who identifies as male and female, whatever. So anyway, if you can, uh, please do it. If you're a couple you want to uh, go to that, That'd be fine, too. Um, two other things. Um, some of you, uh, I think a number of people in the congregation don't remember Melody Province Church. She was a, the music director uh, for the previous predecessor body, uh, Christ the King. At one point, she left many years ago, but she died unexpectedly. Um, and uh, her funeral, uh, our visiting, is going to be this Friday at the Harris Funeral Home. That's the funeral home just north of Five Mile on Farmington Road. Visitation is 1 to 8 p.m. on Friday, and the funeral will be at Holy Cross at 11 o'clock on, uh, on Saturday. Okay? Uh, the one other thing I have, and we will remember in our prayers, is um, some of you may or may not know uh, Pastor Lauren Kirsch Carr. Um, she and her husband were pastors at St. John in Farmington. Then she became an assistant to the bishop. She is now in hospice. Uh, she's been battling cancer for a number of years now, and they have decided to go into hospice. So we will keep her in our prayers also. Um, so that is all I have. Of course, there are many other things in your weekly newsletter. Please be sure to view that. Yes, please. Okay, crafty, no crafty connections this week. It was last week. So... You, I don't know. Did you? you know, how crafty are you with your? Um, I know the weekly newsletter was correct because I changed that, so I, I, so I didn't see that. So yeah. So remind, remember, remember that. Okay. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. <laughs>
I forgot to thank Rich Alter for co covering for uh, Donna, who is taking a Sunday off. Please rise and body your spirit for the confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life, giving in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and are not worthy to be called your children. Have mercy on us and turn us from our sinful ways. Bring us back to you as those who once were dead, but now have life through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives life, freedom from the power of sin, and resurrection from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. Live in newness of life. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. From our God who loves us with an everlasting love, who brings forth a new creation in Christ, who leads us by the Spirit in the wilderness, may grace and abundant mercy be with you all.
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace watches our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love, given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we continue with the readings. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, a river in the deserts. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A reading from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whenever, whatever gain I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I suffered the loss of all things and regard them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Where they, there they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, 
Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared, cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse, and he used to steal from what was in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. Ah, perceptions. One of the definitions in the dictionary of the word perception is, quote, a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. Let me give you an example. Here is an album from my record collection, okay? At first glance, just looks like an uh, a album of uh, Haydn uh, symphonies and a picture of a normal cuckoo clock. But if you look more closely at it, you'll see something that might surprise you. Perceptions. What we think is true versus the reality. Recently, I mean really recently, within the last month or so, a website called YouGov America cobbled together data from the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and a whole bunch of different polls, and many of the results I found to be really, really staggering. For example, in the United States, it is presumed, it is assumed, that 70% of the population are Christian. The real proportion is 58%. In the United States, it is assumed that the Muslim population is 27%. In reality, the Muslim population makes up 1%. The percentage of blacks in this country, perception is estimated to be 41%. The reality is 12%. Hispanics, estimated to be 39%. The reality is 17%. The percentage of the population that are gay or lesbian, Percentage, perceived percentage, 30%. Reality, 3%. Transgender population, perception, 21%. Reality, 1% of the population. And it goes on and on and on from there. Our perceptions are assumptions. assumptions. Unless well-informed, either more closely informed or further away, you know, kind of, you can't see the forest for the trees, you can't see the trees for the forest, well, our assumptions, more often than not, can be simply wrong. Today's Gospel reading takes us back to an incident in the life of our Lord, which we ought to mark with a big red marker. Notice how upset Judas became when Mary took, quote, a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet with it and wiped it with her hair. Then John notes that the gift was so extravagant that the whole house was filled with fra the fragrance of the perfume. Judas's perception of this event, full of self-interest, of course, was that she was wasting money that he, he should have control over. Now, of course, he was careful to couch it, his complaints in a very, what we would call today, politically correct way, about the poor. Why, he said, why? Was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? But John's gospel is quick to point out that he didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he had a personal agenda. He was a thief, and he kept the common purse and used to steal from what was in it. Nevertheless, whatever Judas's motivation was, Jesus' response to Judas, that's the important part. Jesus said, leave her alone. He bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You see, Jesus wasn't, wasn't disturbed or upset. No, instead he appreciated this woman who found such a joyfully extravagant way to express her feelings of love and devotion. I mean, in Mark even, it has this even stronger statement by Jesus where he says, truly I tell you, 
wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Isn't it interesting, isn't it? Jesus doesn't say, when you tell the gospel story, remember Peter, John, or James, or Andrew. He says, remember her. The expensive perfume that Mary used to anoint Jesus was called nard, of course. We heard that, or spike nard. Perfume produced from a plant native to the Himalayan mountains of northern India. It was used in ancient baths and feasts. And the best spike nard was imported in sealed alabaster boxes that were very expensive in and of themselves and were opened only, only on very special occasions. One of my professional journals put the cost of this, this extravagance, which was about 300 denarii, translates in today's money to of $3,000. Don't forget one denarii was a day's salary. Now compare that to the 30 pieces of silver that Judas collected for betraying Jesus. It came out that Mary gave to our Lord at least 10 times more of what Judas collected for his treacherous act. Was it worth 30 pieces of silver to Judas to hand over Jesus to the authorities? Is anything evil done for pay ever worth the compensation? And was it worth $30,000 to Mary to anoint Jesus' body? Can we place any monetary value on a genuine expression of love and worship? And don't such extravagances lose their value when we count the cost of them? Theologian Leonard Sweet wrote noted that, quote, Mary was a woman who threw confidence to the wind, emptied her heart, emptied her wallet, and allowed herself to become a fool for love. Can you sense the pulse of her spiritual perception here? The extravaganza that was a physical expression of a woman who felt at one with our Lord and everything that our Lord stood for. Mary wasn't looking for any reward. All she wanted to do was to connect more fully with him in as total a way as she possibly could. You know, spirituality comes in many forms, but a primal form of spirituality, believe it or not, is laughter. It's a common denominator in every race, every culture, every language. I mean, when we hold a tiny baby in our arms, we smile at them, don't we? And when we receive a smile back, believe it, whether it be gas or not, when we get it back, it feels deeply rewarding. Uninhibited five-year-old children have been observed laughing up to 500 times a day. Smiles are the way people without arms and legs and voices connect with their caregivers, and that is how caregivers give their love and affirmation to someone who might have a severe mental deficiency. Smiles and laughter connect people in a very fulfilling and very spiritual way. So is it any wonder that most people would rather attend a party than go to church? These people are looking for the perfume and oil that makes the heart glad even though the morning after hangover often contradicts the fantasy. I mean, if we really truly believe in and we fully live out the gospel, churches should be filled with laughter, right? And while laughter is at the heart of spirituality, smell also has a spiritual impact. Scientists have suggested that our genes give off a certain odor that, that people are attracted to those people whose genes are most like their own. And studies support the theory that are now proven to have implications in more ways than one in the selection of a mate, including fertility and genetic disease. Now, if all this sounds too physical to be spiritual, remember spirituality is connected in our consciousness. And smell plays a big role in determining with whom we connect. Fragrances affect our moods, mental states, and behavior. Chamomile and lavender affect relaxation, right? Frankincense, remember one of the gifts of the three wise men? And la frankincense and lavender and nutmeg affect stress. Lemon and peppermint serve as stimulants, while a mixture of rosemary and lemon heighten our concentration. 
I've even heard in Japan, they pump scents through the air conditioning system to wake the workers up in the morning, to call them during lunch and get them through the afternoon. And none of this is new to the church. In Isaiah 30, there's an instruction that the altar of incense be placed in front of the veil of the Holy of Holies so that the priest could perpetually offer praise. In early Roman Catholic tradition, women would go to the garden at springtime before Mass and pick up a bud or blossom from a sweet-smelling bush. And if the sermon got too long or boring, not a problem we have here, they would squeeze the blossom and release the fragrance into the air. And many churches, yes, even Lutheran churches, use incense on a regular basis in connection with Holy Communion. So Mary's splashing of expensive perfume was profound, especially, especially when we smell it again. And we smell it through the nose of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we smell it on that day when they beat him with a whip until the blood ran down his back like a waterfall. When on that day they made him climb the Via Dolorosa carrying that 80-pound palabium on which his wrists were later to be nailed. On that day when he fell, causing unnamed injuries. On that day when they stripped him naked and nailed him to that piece of wood wood that he carried. When on that day, when our Lord's loneliness was almost too much to bear, Jesus still smelled the perfume. How can we measure the monetary value of that? Even if our perception of Lent happens to stifle us by cloaking us in Lenten piety and sadness. It is only because our perceptions must change that we must become more sensitized in order to smell the victorious joy of our Lord's Easter resurrection. So on this Sunday, before the Holy Week begins, I ask you, my family of faith, I ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to revel in the perfume? Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing Holy God, Holy and Glorious.
I'll confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, as you delivered your people from Egypt and Babylon, so lead us out of the wilderness of our confusion and doubt. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Holy Spirit, hear our songs of praise and shouts of joy when we see our sufferings come to an end and our losses restored, both in this world and the next. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, as the pain of the past dis diminishes in our memory, give us courage to press on towards the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, as you accept our gifts of love, no matter how simple or costly they are, defend us from those who would criticize our faithful generosity. Lord, in your mercy. As Martha and Mary served you at dinner and anointed your feet, so fill us with hospitality, that we may know the joy of being with you at being with you at table. Lord, in your mercy. The ill among us are named in love. Lord Jesus, that you might comfort and heal according to your holy will. We especially pray for Dinah Wolf, Barb Swire. Ruth Klosterhouse, Margaret Aho, Martha Johnson, Lisa Bree, England, Mary Press, Cheryl Dean, Robin Connolly, Pastor Lauren Krish Carr in hospice, Michael Grant, Emma Romero, John O'Neill, Janet Klish, Christopher, and Madeline. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be with those who have special needs own only to you that they may hear your guiding voice. Today we lift up all victims of worldly conflict, especially the Ukrainian people, Christians persecuted around the world, Cassandra Manzon, Deborah Aho, those who hold political office, those serving our country, including Ian Bramig, Robert Shambo, Rachel Flores, Owen Green, Calvin Hem, Devin Kearney, Tyler M Miller, Trevor Danielson, and Ryan Lloyd. The people in our companion senate, the Mambulu Diocese in Tanzania, the Evangelic Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Senate, our Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Donald Chris and their staff, the Celebration Lutheran Church Council and staff, our pastor, the Reverend James Vogel. Lord, in your mercy. Open our hearts always so that we may always experience and rejoice in your grace. Today we especially give thanksgiving for Stu Israel, Bud Johnson, Ann Featherstone, Marion Jones, Emily Nathan Oliver Hoist. Birthdays this week, Deanna Holt, Bob Klish, Carol Knapp, Victoria Reed, Chuck Trukowski. Anniversaries this week, Cliff and Maureen Swire, Pastor and Heather Fogel. Lord, in your mercy. 
Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. This day we lift up the families and friends of those who have died in you. We lift up Brenda Rubin, Melanie Provencher, Russell McDonald. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us now as we together pray for this community of faith. Gracious God, we the family of faith. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace. Let us now worship with our offerings.
Let us pray. God, our provider, we have not fed us with bread alone, but by the word of grace and life. Bless us and be your gifts. For you receive from your mouth the Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, and into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son, at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Holy God, we pray for the gift of your Spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. 
blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are truly the gifts of God for all of God's people. You may come to the table of grace, and you may also now be seated.
Please rise in body or spirit. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be, hun for, may our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayers the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. My family of faith, always remember that Jesus took the form of a servant and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. May you follow his example and share in the resurrection. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this point, I just miss the young people to meet. There we go in the back as they begin their Christian education. And the confirmation students can go ahead through the line. I don't know if there's anything there, but grab what you can. And we sing our sending him beneath the cross of Jesus. into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit.